Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, we begin on the storm watch this evening. Snow moves in after evening commute. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Kevin Scarippa. Winter weather advisories posted for southern New Hampshire while we have winter storm warnings posted up north. Here is the latest on what we're expecting with this system. Snow starts to move in as a few flakes in southern New Hampshire, give or take 7 o'clock, and then we'll start to pick up from there, not expecting the roadways to be too much of an issue until past 9 o'clock this evening. And then from there, we will continue to see the snowfall navigate north. We're probably arriving somewhere around 11 o'clock or midnight in the north country. The heaviest portion and the height of the storm will be overnight tonight and then first few daylight hours on Friday. Friday, and it should start to diminish early to mid-afternoon on Friday. We're looking at a widespread 4 to 8-inch accumulation, while for southern and southeastern areas of the state, the wild card of this entire system is what hours we start to transition, because once we do, that's pretty much it as far as the snowfall accumulation is concerned. Clouds have been increasing and thickening as we've gone through the morning. Temperatures are hovering around in the 30s as we go through the afternoon. You'll notice that snowfall slowly advancing northward from D.C. and Philadelphia, now up through New York as we record this for you just before the noon hour, and again, arrival probably after the evening commute, which helps us for the evening commute itself. Here's the beginnings of it, 7, 8 o'clock this evening in southern areas. Once it gets going, it's just going to take about an hour or two for it to start picking up. Southern New Hampshire and all the way south of the White Mountains by midnight with far northern areas waiting on a few snowflakes. Want you to notice just offshore sometime after midnight, we're going to start to see an easterly wind, and that may keep it just warm enough along the shoreline to start switching over. Now, we get into southern New Hampshire, and we are attempting to look at a switchover somewhere during the pre-dawn hours or very early tomorrow morning, just before daybreak. If that happens, that effectively ends any sort of accumulation for Manchester out through the coast, while it'll be over to a wintry mix in some southwestern areas, depending on elevation, with mainly snow the farther north you go, up through the White Mountains and the Great North Woods, including central parts of the state. As you will notice here, by around lunchtime, we are looking at the heaviest of the precipitation starting to navigate farther to the northeast and away from us. What that leaves us with is maybe even a transition back to a little bit of wet snow with little, if any, accumulation in southern areas, while farther north, you're probably seeing additional snowfall, which will wind down through the afternoon. Notice the evening commute much better. We'll go later tonight, and we will continue to see the on and off snow across the area before clearing skies take hold. Bright and breezy day for us on Saturday. Sunday, good deal of sunshine around, and along with that as we go through the afternoon, a lighter wind. So there's a look at your possible snowfall amounts. We're looking at a widespread 4 to 8 inch accumulation. We do suspect that in areas above 1,500 to 2,000 feet, the normal favored areas, that there could be some spot 9 or 10 inch amounts, especially if you stay mainly snow. The trick is what hours we expect the snowfall to continue to transition over to that wintry mix or plain rain. And that is a really tricky town-by-town -town situation. But you can see in general, the farther south and east you go across the state, we are expecting lesser amounts than the rest of us. But a pretty good burst of snow developing later on tonight through early tomorrow morning. After we get by this system and toward the evening commute tomorrow, we are expecting very little in the way of problems. Just a few snow showers Monday and Wednesday. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report from meteorologist Kevin Scarippa. And also, there are 40 closings and delays this evening that will be in effect for tomorrow. If you want to see that complete list, just go to WMUR.com. And now let's take a look at your traffic this evening and see how your evening ride home from work looks like. And here's a look at your traffic this evening. We're seeing a lot of green roadways and a lot of yellow and red roadways spread out in New Hampshire. So, a little slow going on your evening ride home from work. But no major accidents or issues to report this far this evening. 
but we'll keep you updated if we get any reports of any accidents on those roadways. Dartmouth College sued following professor misconduct allegations. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Kristen Carosa. Adam, there are seven women accusing three professors of sexual misconduct. Right now, the school denies any allegations that it ignored complaints about them. In the lawsuit, the women claim the school did not protect them from the professor's predatory behavior that allegedly went on for more than a decade. The plaintiffs say it included groping, harassment, and in one case, rape. The complaint goes on to say the professors hired lab assistants based on their physical attractiveness, as well as conducted professional lab meetings at bars and invited students to late night hot tub parties in their homes. The two alleged victims we spoke with say the pressure to participate was intense and there was retaliation if they did not comply. It was a very open secret. Um, these men were known predators, but at the same time, I think most of the graduate students experienced things that they were uncomfortable with and would likely have kept to themselves until it became very clear that this was an intergenerational problem. It took an escalation to this absurd and, and unacceptable level of severity for many of us to come forward and defend ourselves. And so I, I really want other women to, to take a moment, you know, and, and sort of say, let's never let it get this far again. Now, Dartmouth College has released a statement at this hour. They say, in part, sexual misconduct and harassment have no place at Dartmouth. However, we respectfully but strongly disagree with the characterizations of Dartmouth's actions in the complaint and will respond through our own court filings. Right now, we are not naming the professors because they're not facing criminal charges at this time. They no longer work at the school. One retired and two resigned. Live in studio, Kristen Carosa, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. All options are on the table. Cassius won't rule out a 2020 presidential run. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. Cross is one potential candidate off the list. There's another in the state today who could really shake things up if he decides to run. This morning, John Kasich stopped by our studios to record an interview for Close Up. He's in the first in the nation primary state to speak at a First Amendment awards dinner tonight. <laughs> Governor Kasich hasn't ruled out running against President Donald Trump in 2020, and he's hinted that he might decide to do it as a conservative independent, but he says he's not interested in jumping into a race that won't yield a positive outcome. I don't want to come here and waste people's time, burn the energy of people who, uh, you know, who support me, burn up resources, if I'm going to come here and not do very well, <clears throat> because that diminishes what I think has been a voice that's more powerful. That full interview will air on Close Up Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on WMUR. We'll have more of the governor's visit tonight at 5 and 6. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire Democrats give Van Ostern not bidding vote a performance for Secretary of State. Former Executive Counselor and 2016 Democrat Governor nominee Colin Van Ostern won a strong vote of confidence from the New Hampshire House of Democrat Caucus Thursday in his bid to oust 42-year-old Secretary of State William Gardner 
from office. The two majority caucus meetings is closed session held a knobbing vote on its performance. Who should be the state's top election official in January? Van Ostern defeated 21 term Secretary Gardner 179 to 23 with seven votes for the third announced candidates, former state rep Peter Sullivan. Seven other ballots were left blank. While it was a strong vote, it was not enough to guarantee Van Ostern a win when it matters. It, the, in the final vote of the full House and Senate on December 5th, assuming all 424 legislators attend, the winner will need 213 votes to become or remain Secretary of State. Only 209 of the 234 members of the House Democrat Caucus participated in Thursday's vote. There are 166 Republican House members, most, if not all, of whom are expected to support Gardner. The new Secretary Senate will have 14 Democrats and 10 Republicans. The official vote will be held on December 5th when the full House and Senate meet in joint sessions for Organization Day. Formulative lawmakers will be sworn in to office and elections will be held for House Speaker, State Senate President, and the constitutional post of Secretary of State and Se State Treasury. Van Ostern mounted the challenge to Gardner in spring, and Sullivan quickly followed. Gardner, who, like Van Ostern, is a registered Democrat, drew strong criticism from Democrats for agreeing to join President Donald Trump's now defunct Voter Fraud Commission. Sullivan had been a Democrat until after the vote when he announced that he would switch his affiliate to undeclared. Gardner also agreed Democrats by supporting two new laws that tighten voter registration requirements and were passed exclusively by the outgoing House and Senate Republican majorities and signed by Ch Republican Governor Chris Sununu. After the nobbing vote, Van Ostern said, I think we need a more modern and accountable Secretary of State's office, and we need to do a better job of protecting the rights of every voter and every local official who makes our elections work well. The vote came after the House Democrats amend the rules of the caucus to allow for the vote to take place, and it came after the Democrats chose, chose House Democrats leader Steve Schutfer as their nominee for Speaker of the House in December 5th, final vote. Republicans will pick nominee for Speaker of the House on November 29th. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market and see how U.S. stock market closed for this Thursday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the green and went up. And NASDAQ closed in the green and went up. S&P 500 closed in the green and went up. Gold closed in the green and went up. Oil closed in the green and went up. U.S. 10-year closed in the green and went down. 
Your assumption was to close flat and VIX closed in the bed and went down. SAP 500 snaps five day losing streak as shares Apple JP Morgan gain. The major stock indexes snapped multi-day losing streak Thursday as J.P. Morgan Chase led banks higher and iPhone maker Apple rebound after dipping into bear market territory earlier in the week. Go Fund Me campaign to help Homeless vet was predicted on a lie, prosecutors say. Let's take a look at the video from ABC News. Your school, your job, your dreams. Your problems. But at the Y, we create opportunities for everyone, no matter who you are or where you're from. For a better us, donate to your local Y today. New twist in that GoFundMe story involving a homeless man and a woman who needed help when her car ran out of gas. Well, now the big question, was the entire thing a scam? Gio Benitez is here with the latest on that. Good morning, Gio. Hey, Robin, good morning. Yeah, if true, that would mean this was a plot to take advantage of our better nature, the side of us that is charitable and moved by stories of kindness. This morning, a new report says there was nothing charitable about this. The story sounded almost too good to be true. Johnny Bobbitt, a homeless man, gave Kate McClure, a total stranger, his last $20 for gas after she became stranded on an interstate in Philadelphia. McClure and her boyfriend, Mark D'Amico, said they went public about what happened because they wanted to help Bobbitt. We were thinking, what if we started a GoFundMe for this guy just to get him, you know, to get him off of the streets even for a weekend? The fund quickly grew to more than $400,000 with donations from more than 14,000 people. It's like winning a lottery. But the happy story began to crack when Bobbitt accused the couple of stealing his money, using it to fund lavish trips to Vegas, the Grand Canyon, and New York City. Local law enforcement zeroed in on the couple in recent months, raiding their home, towing away their car. An arrest seemed imminent. But this morning, a bombshell. According to a new report, authorities believe the entire tale was a ruse conceived by all three of them in a get-rich-quick scheme. According to an NBC affiliate, McClure and D'Amico have turned themselves in, but Bobbitt is still at large. The three are expected to be charged with conspiracy and theft by deception for working together to concoct the story. D'Amico and McClure always denied spending Bobbitt's money themselves, saying they were managing the money for him because of his drug habit. And that report also says the three deliberately prevented donors from gaining any additional information about that GoFundMe campaign. You know, we reached out to the attorney for the couple. He says no comment. It's just getting more and more unbelievable. Yeah, I know. Day by day. There, there's so many people who are on there for the right reasons mm -hmm. and needing help. And, and so now you're, you're leery. And it's just hurts your heart that those people who do benefit, now you're going to have double... You're going to have second thoughts about it. Yeah, now, now you just got to keep checking and checking. And vetting and vetting. Yeah. Wow. All right. That's Thank you, Gio. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday night, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night, everyone. Bye.